Okay, uh, welcome back. We are going to be covering uh, chapter 9. In this collection of videos, chapter 9 deals with something called solutions. I'm going to define solutions here. Uh, solution is usually a liquid. It doesn't have to be a liquid, but the only uh, type of solution that we're going to talk about will be a liquid where one or more things are dissolved in something else. So you are all pretty familiar with solutions, uh, very common ones that you deal with every day. But there's some words that I want you to know. I want you to know what the definition of a solution is. Um, the things that are dissolved are called solutes. So I want you to know what that word means as well. And the stuff that does the dissolving, in our case it's always going to be a liquid, is called a solvent. So I want you to know what these three words mean. The problem is they all sound pretty similar. They're all, they're all spelled similarly but they all mean something different. And you're going to have to know what they mean because uh, there are equations coming up in later videos where uh, these words are going to be used and you need to use them very precisely in the equations. So solution is, uh, for us it's going to be a liquid where at least one thing is dissolved in the liquid. Solute is the stuff that gets dissolved. Solvent is the liquid that does the dissolving. So if, you, uh, if I told you you had a salt water solution, and I said, what's the solute? You can pause and think about that for a second. Unpausing, that would be the salt, because that's the stuff that, that's dissolved. If I said, what's, you have salt water, and what's the solvent? You can pause again and think about that. Unpausing, I would say that's the water. Last but not least, I could say, what's the solution? And it's both of those things mixed together. All right, so you need to know that. Um, there are different kinds of solvents. So remember, solvents are, for us, the liquid that does the dissolving. There are many different liquids that can dissolve things. You can break them into categories. One way that people, one type of category that uh, people break them into is whether they like to mix with water, and usually these are called polar solvents. And uh, the other category might be called nonpolar. Those are liquids that uh, basically don't like to mix with water. What, what this really means is that there are little electrical poles on uh, different areas of the of these kinds of liquids, and the little those little electrical poles uh, like to uh, be attracted to the little electrical poles that are on water molecules. And so basically, things that are charged, things that have electrical charges, or have partial electrical charges, um, tend to be good at dissolving in other liquids that also have uh, partial electrical charges, which is basically what polar means. And things that are, have electrical charges or partial electrical charges are usually horrible at dissolving in things that don't have these electrical charges. And things that don't have electrical charges are generally good at dissolving in these types of nonpolar materials. So the classic example of a polar solvent is just water itself. So water molecule, I'll show you what I mean by polar. Here's a water molecule. The water molecule is bent like this. The, the oxygen side has a little bit of a negative charge, and this is how you show people that you have a partial negative electrical charge. The other side of the water molecule, the hydrogen side, has uh, partial positive charges. Um, and because one side of the molecule is not the same as the other side, as far as electrical charge is concerned, you say that it's a polar molecule because there are little electrical poles, polar and polar molecule, because there are little electrical poles on either side of the molecule. And these types of molecules with these little electrical charges tend to be good at dissolving other things with charges. Um, so water is kind of the classic example of this. Water is really good at dissolving things like uh, table salt, because table salt is made of sodium with a positive electrical charge and chloride with a negative electrical charge. And so the positive of the sodium likes to interact with the negative charge of the oxygen on water, and the negative charge of the chloride likes to interact with the positive charge of the hydrogen on water. So therefore, water is good at kind of pulling sodium and chloride apart from each other and dissolving it. 
classic example of nonpolar liquid uh, might be many different kinds of oils, like vegetable oil. Um, vegetable oil, molecules in vegetable oil and the atoms, uh, are, are generally uncharged. They don't have an electrical charge. And if you notice, vegetable oil and water don't mix. And that's because the stuff doesn't, the atoms on these types of molecules don't have electrical charges, but water does. So oils, gasoline, things like gasoline, those tend to be nonpolar, and they tend to mix with each other very well, and they tend to mix not so well with water. So these are just different types of solvents. And like I said, uh, polar solvents um, usually dissolve other polar materials and other materials that have charges. This little thing here, that's supposed to be a tiny, tiny uh, cube of table salt, so NaCl. And if I throw a bunch of waters at this, like I said, the little positive side of the water molecule will like to interact with the little with the full-blown negative charge of the chloride ions in table salt. And the opposite happens. The little negative side of the water molecule, the oxygen side, will like to interact with the full-blown positive of the sodium in table salt. And so if you throw enough water molecules at table salt, the water molecules will chip away at all of these little pieces and break them apart. And the sodiums and chlorides will basically come apart from each other, and they'll end up all alone by themselves surrounded by water. And that's basically what dissolving is. So when, yeah, I'm sure many of you have dissolved table salt in water, for cooking at least. So here I'm showing you an equation of what happens when you take table salt, mix it with water. And this is just uh, an equation showing you what you saw in the previous slide, in the cartoon of the previous slide. You take uh, solid table salt, that's what this S means, you mix it with liquid water, and then the sodium ions, the sodium and the chloride split apart from each other, so here's sodium all alone, and the AQ means that it's dissolved in water. The chloride ion is also all by itself. It's separated now. There's a plus sign there. It is also dissolved in water. And the water is still the water. So basically what this equation is saying is, look, if you take solid table salt, you mix it with liquid water, the sodium and the chloride end up split apart from each other. And there's still water. And the fancy word for when the sodium and chloride are split apart from each other is you say they are uh, dissociated. That just means they split apart. So this is what happens when you take table salt and dissolve it in water. Sodium and chloride dissociate or they split apart. But now I'm going to confuse the issue. I'm going to say, well, how do you know that's true? What if, what if this is really the truth down here? Now, this is a lie, but pretend, humor me for a second. I take solid table salt, I mix it with liquid water, and the sodium and chloride never dissociate. They're still stuck to each other. They're dissolved in water now. They're not a solid anymore, but they never split apart. How do you know that the top situation is the truth and the bottom situation is a lie? Um, you can think about that. I don't expect you to know the answer to this because there's an experiment that you have to do that kind of helps us along. Um, and you're going to have to wait till the next video to uh, figure out what, what the reasoning is. But you can think about that and then maybe watch the next video. So, not true. See you in the next video.